passive means you're investing in something and it's providing you an income that you have no control over, no management, no, no one's, you're, you're not swapping time for dollars. Is there an hour limit as well? Like you have to like show that you haven't worked so many hours. I'll get that in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But if you are uh, actively employed, you could be actively self-employed with one industry and you're getting income from that. Mm -hmm. That does not count as passive income. Only passive income from investments is going to count as passive income, which means in short, that if you have, for example, a uh, property that you're depreciated, you've got stuff you're writing off, uh, you got values you're writing down. All those uh, are tax deductions, mm -hmm. but it's only against other passive income. So you can't deduct, you can't take deductions from active income and put it against passive. Right. So and vice let, versa. let's say for example, you're a dentist mm -hmm. and you have active income from your dental practice. Okay. So it's active income is typically W2 income is how yeah, we or it could be 10, I guess it could be 1099. Yeah, or it can even be a K-1, but if it's your business, that's active income. Okay. Um, however you get paid to your dental practice. A mm -hmm. lot of it sometimes, depending on how the structure is set up, could be just owner draws. That's still active income. So, but you're invested in a syndication okay. where there's property ownership in it. And it, it is a, we'll call it a uh, value add uh, syndication. So, so this is going on for five or six or seven, 10 years. You, you're buying it. You're adding value in the first year or two. And the then, sponsor is. Yeah. The sponsor is, and you're just participating. Right. Yeah. So you have cash in it and over time they can pass through some of these write-offs that they're getting depreciation, uh, write down in values, uh, because, and we'll get to that in a minute with some IRA stuff too. Uh, as you're, trying to add value, you're actually going to lose value <laughs> during the process. Cause when you, you buy it, you're buying it, it it's got a value attached to it based on the uh, current appraisal that mm -hmm. it was purchased. In. Then as you're rehabbing or making this place a little bit better, you're going to lose income. You're going to, because you're paying more to bring it up to standards. So you're talking about an, in you're an income producing property. So it went from producing X, as a functioning place, but need of repairs. Right. Now it, it, there is not functioning at all and it's being repaired. So there's or, no, there's less income coming or, in. Or it could be that you haven't lost any people, but now your expenses are higher than your income. So if it's based off of an NOI and a cap rate, your value has gone down because your net operating income yes. has plummeted because of your repairs. Yeah. And in most cases you're losing tenancy because you, you have to go in and repair places mm -hmm. and they can't operate while you're in here.